Over the next several videos, we're going to take a look at geometry mode. Now, geometry mode is a mode that you can put the editor in that allows you to perform modeling operations on BSP brushes in your level. Things like moving components such as uh, polygon faces or vertices around. You can make extrusions. You can even run a lathing operation which allows you to extrude around a, a single pivot point in an arc-like shape. Now, to get into Geometry Mode, all you have to do is click the Geometry Mode button located on the left side of your screen at the top of the toolbox. It looks like a little tiny transparent cube. And once you click that, you'll get the Geometry Tools window. Let's talk just a second about the interface of this window. You'll see it's broken up into three groups. We have a Modifiers group, a Properties group, and another Modifiers group. Now, there is a difference between the two Modifiers groups, but I'll talk about that in a moment. Let's just kind of go from top to bottom. This first modifiers group is considered to be the passive modifiers. You can think of these like sub-modes for geometry mode. For instance, you have edit mode, and if I have that active, you notice the radio button next to it, if I click on my builder brush, then you'll see that I get this really cool highlighting scenario here that allows me to easily select vertices, faces, and if you're really accurate with the pixel clicking, you can get right to an edge as well and you can manipulate these things around. Now that's what edit mode is all about and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But there are other modes as well. We have brush clip mode which allows us to slice through our brushes as if they were as if we had kind of a planar cutting laser. We have pen mode which allows us to draw out brand new brushes just by dropping down some points in one of the orthogonal views and a couple of others as well that are specific to selections and we'll talk about those as we move forward. The point is that these are modes that geometry mode can then be placed into so that when we're in pen mode, we're in a mode that allows us to draw out brushes. When we're in edit mode, we're in a mode that allows us to manipulate components. Now down from here, we have the properties window. This is going to change depending on which of the passive modifiers we have selected. You'll see here in pen mode, we have some settings that control things like automatic extrusion of the shape we create, uh, how far we'd like to make that extrusion. If we switch over to edit, we have no properties, and if we go to brush clip, there's a few properties here, and we'll be talking about these properties for each one of the modifiers as we move forward. Now down from here, we have another modifiers group, and these are the active modifiers. These are just a series of buttons, and each button performs a different function. Some of them will be grayed out, others will be uh, available at all times, and really what it depends on is what you have selected. As you make different types of selections, for instance, if I grab a polygon face, you'll notice that certain buttons gray out while others suddenly become active. So it all depends on what you have selected. All right. Now with that understood, let's take a quick look at geom um, sorry, edit mode. Geometry modes, edit mode. That's what I meant to say. Which is pretty easy. It's just a straightforward mode that allows you to manipulate components. As I mentioned, we get the ability to more easily select components, such as polygon faces and vertices. And what can we do with them? We can move them and we can scale them. We cannot rotate individual components, though you can use a component selection as a means to rotate about a pivot. But let's just take a look. I can drag this vertex up into the air, and you'll notice that when I do, we have changed the shape of the brush, but you'll also see the geometry mode automatically splits this face because you made it non-planar. Geometry mode insists that all faces be planar, and so if you make something non-planar, it's going to add an edge to turn it into two planar faces which is pretty standard. If you like to remove this edge, you would need to replanarize all four of these vertices, so you need to make sure that they were snapped back together. Now my drag grid is currently set to four, so getting that right back to its planar edge would probably require that I come over here to the side view, and I can slide that back down. There we go. Now everybody's planar once again. And if you didn't like that triangle edge, if you just had to absolutely get rid of that, you can select your brush. So notice I deselected, reselected the brush itself, and we can click on the optimize button, and that'll take out any unnecessary edges. So back over to edit mode, we can click on edges and manipulate those as well. So I can pull an edge up. We can click on faces, and I can manipulate those. Now, as for scaling, we can perform uniform scales, so you can take a face and make it smaller, or if you want to, you can select an edge, and you can scale that as well. 
So you can start to get some really interesting brushes just by manipulating this around. But I would like to remind you that generally it's a good idea to keep your brushes uh, very, very simple. Now I'm going to reset back to a basic cube by clicking on the cube button, which by default will just take us back to a 256 by 256 by 256 cube. One other thing I wanted to mention is that when you're manipulating vertices, specifically in edit mode, there is an automatic weld feature if you move two vertices to the exact same location. To illustrate this, I'm going to pull my drag grid to 8 just to make things a little easier to manipulate. I'm going to tap the space bar and drag this vertex from the right over to the left. Now notice I'm placing one vertex right on top of the other. As soon as I do that, Geometry Mode creates one of those automatic edges, and these two vertices are now the same vertex. That's really cool if you know it's going to happen and you need it to happen, but if you're not ready for it, it can be a little problematic. So just be aware that if you put two vertices on top of one another, they are going to get combined. Let's go ahead and switch back to a cube. The other thing I wanted to mention is that you can make use of your reference coordinate systems to get some interesting motion. If I grab this edge down here on the lower left hand side of my box and we slide it out, now I'm going to grab this polygon face. Now take a look at my translation widget. Currently its axes are aligned to the world axes. We can move up in Z, we can move forward in Y. Now I am tapping undo in between these to reset everything. And we can move side to side in X. But those are based on world coordinates. If, I, if you like, you can switch up to local coordinates. Now this is up in the main toolbar. You have your little reference coordinate system drop down. If you set that to local, now check out the translation widget. You'll see that X actually points off the normal of the surface, and then Z and Y are also perpendicular as well. So some very cool features. You can really change your brush's shape just right here using edit mode. But that's going to wrap things up for this video. I just wanted to introduce you to the interface of geometry mode and edit mode. And now as we move forward, we'll take a look at some of these other passive modifiers as well as the active modifiers. Thanks a lot. Moving on with geometry mode, the next thing I want to talk about are extrusions. Now to extrude in geometry mode, you need to switch over to the passive modifier extrude located here at the top of the geometry tools window, but you'll notice by default it's grayed out. It's because it's going to only become active when you select a polygonal face. So grab any one of these faces and suddenly, boom, you can see extrude. So I'm going to switch over to that. Now as soon as I do, some properties pop up, and these are pretty obvious properties. We can set the length of our extrusion. And then we can also set the segments. Now this is only mostly obvious, but what this is going to do is control how many times that your extrusion is going to take place. Now, if you're already familiar with the concept of extruding, maybe from working with a 3D package, you should know that length is not going to be total length. It's going to be the length of each individual extrusion. What does that mean? Well, that means if I set my length to a value of 10 and I set my segments to a value of 10, I will end up with a 100 unit length extrusion that's divided up into 10 segments. So it's going to add 10 over and over and over again. It's not going to be one single uh, 10 unit extrusion that's broken up into 10 single unit cells. So it's very straight up. You just grab uh, whatever you want for your length on each extrusion, say 32 units, however many segments you want, let's just say three, and click the apply button. And now we've got an extrusion. Each one of these segments that you see here is 32 units leading up to a total of 96. Pretty easy to use, but you don't have to use the buttons if you don't want to. If you don't want to set numbers and click apply, you can just grab any face that you like and use your translation widget as long as you are in the extrude passive modifier mode. I can just drag out a face and make as many extrusions as my heart desires. Though I will give you this little word of, uh, word of warning that it can be a little bit on the uh, annoying side if you just happen to forget that you're in extrude mode and you grab a face and try to move it because you're going to end up changing your shape. Now this is a really easy way to create blocking volumes for complex parts of your level. You can see how quickly it would allow you to just trace out, say, a, a wall network or something that you needed to block off from the player that you could then drop down as a volume. Just, again, try to keep in mind that your brushes should generally be fairly simple. So that's really all there is to extrusions in geometry mode, which is going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot. 
let's take a look at the brush clip modifier for geometry mode. Now brush clip allows you to slice through a BSP brush as if you had a cutting laser. Using the properties you can determine whether you're going to keep one half of the brush or the other half or if you actually just want to keep them both and as a result have two new brushes. Now it's pretty easy to use but in order to show off all of the features I can't really use the builder brush because you can't have two builder brushes so I can't slice them in half and have two separate ones. So what we're gonna do is select our builder brush and here in my viewport I'm gonna hit control A and slide the red builder brush out of the way. Now currently I'm in brush wire frame mode which is just making it easier for me to select these brushes here in perspective and what I'm gonna do is enter brush clip mode. Now I call it mode, but basically we've entered the brush clip passive modifier. Okay, now let's take a quick look at the settings. Flip normal and split. These will actually make more sense after we create our very first split. Now using the brush clip modifier requires that you use the orthogonal views and here's why. If you take a close look, there's a little tiny white box which is currently chasing my cursor around the map. As a matter of fact, if I take my drag grid and I lower it down to say, well 64 might be extreme, let's try 32. There you go. So now that box is really easy to see. This box allows you to control where you're going to drop a clip marker. So without even trying to describe what those do, let's just talk about dropping those. If we move the mouse to say right about here and tap the space bar, actually make sure you have focus in the viewport before you do that, you can tap the space bar and we're going to create a single clip marker. Now, as I drag around, we get an interesting rubber band line that's kind of connecting to a second box. We also get a perpendicular line leading off of that rubber band line. That perpendicular line is a normal, and that's telling us which way this clip is facing. Now, what I'm going to do is tap the space bar again, and we end up with an actual clipping marker. This is kind of like an infinite plane that we've just defined. We've given it an angle, and now it's ready to slice through a brush. All I need to do is select the brush that I'd like to slice. So in this case, I'll just select my additive brush, and I can click Apply and watch what happens when I do. Half the brush disappears. Now I'll deselect to make it a little easier to see. We lost the half of the brush that was on the side of our normal. So that's important to keep in, keep in mind. Now what I'm going to do is reset. So uh, let's go ahead and just delete out this brush. And we'll clear out the clipping markers. I'll just jump into edit mode and move the viewport and that gets rid of those. Now let's grab our red builder brush again. And I'm going to make a new additive brush. So I'll just hit control A again. And we'll move the, the red builder brush one more time. Now, once again, I'm just going to tap space bar to put down a marker. Tap space bar to put down another marker. Now let's talk about the settings. So we the first setting we have is flip normal. If we check this, select our brush and hit apply, notice this time we keep the part of the brush that is on the side of the normal. It doesn't actually flip the normal around, so you won't notice any change. It's just when you split that it's actually going to delete the opposite side of the brush uh, from the normal. That's really all there is to it. Now. I need another brush, so let's just drive the red builder brush over here. I'll hit Control A again and slide the red builder brush out of the way. Our third option is split. So if we actually, I think that's our second option, but don't tell anybody I said that. Now, what I'm going to do is come over here and drop down a couple of new clipping markers. We'll select the brush, check split, and click apply. Now, check out what we've got. We have two individual brushes so it actually kept both halves and we can separate those from each other and there you go so if we come over and take a look at what we've got over here in perspective you see we've just split the brush up so it's really all there is to it it's just when you need to cut through a brush if a brush is sticking out too far or you need to you know, maybe bevel its edges or chop off a corner this is the tool you're gonna reach for so that is a very quick look at the brush clip mode which is gonna wrap up this video thanks a lot the pen modifier in geometry mode allows you to draw out your own brushes or create your own brush shape actor. Now brush shape actor is something we'll actually discuss a little bit later, so for now we'll just focus on the brush drawing aspects of it. It does require that you work in an orthographic view, so I'm going to slide my little horizontal splitter bar down so we can just see the top view. 
and we'll switch over to the pen modifier. There's a couple of settings here. We have auto extrude, which is if the shape that you create needs to automatically be extruded into a brush. If you don't have this checked, then you're technically not creating a brush at that point, in which case you're probably wanting to create a brush shape. So uh, generally you wanna have one or the other of these two checkboxes set. Now a brush shape, is going to be a special actor used in lathing. So we won't talk about that until we get to the lathe modifier. We can choose to create convex polygons. If you have this checked, uh, basically an optimization is gonna be run on your brush to make sure that you don't have any concave polygons. It'll keep all of the different polygons that make up your final brush very simple. And that can be very important, which is why this is on by default. Then finally, you have your extrude depth, which is how tall your brush is gonna be. So knowing that, let's take a quick stab at drawing something here. I'm going to select the Red Builder brush, and then while I'm in pen mode, I've actually got a little tiny white square that is, once again, chasing my cursor around very much as if we were using the brush clip modifier. But let me take my drag grid, and we'll pull that down to 32, just to make that nice and big and easy to see. Now, just like with brush clip, I can tap the space bar to drop down points. Each time I do, I get a little orange dashed rubber band line and I can drop as many points as I want. And we can make all sorts of interesting, cool shapes. When I'm done, I can just close back or press enter, and that is going to create a brush based on that extrude depth that I set. So if I come down here to the perspective viewport, you can see the brush that I've created. In this case, you can also see the result of that create convex polygon setting because you see all these extra splits in here that are simplifying each one of the polygon faces so that they're all convex, meaning they don't fold back in on themselves in any way. So that is a really quick look at the pen tool. Let's do one more. Just one more just to demonstrate. This time I'm gonna change my extrude depth to say 512. And we'll make something that's maybe a little more useful. So maybe if you need like a trapezoidal shaped room with an interesting angle, so. I slide this over. Now you can still navigate the view with this because it's waiting for spacebar to drop down the points, which is very handy. And then we'll just close that back. And now, over here in perspective, you can see the result of our drawing. So extruded to 512 high. So that's going to wrap things up for this quick demonstration of the pen modifier. Thanks a lot. The lathe modifier allows you to create an arc-like extrusion from a pivot point. It does require that you start off using the pen modifier to create a brush shape actor, so that's how we're going to begin this demonstration. I'm going to jump over to the side view, and let's switch over to the pen modifier. Now take a look at my settings. Notice that auto extrude is currently switched off, and create brush shape is currently switched on. You're going to need these settings if you want to create a brush shape actor to be used with a lathe. Now, when you're creating this brush shape, think of this as a cross-section of the object that you'd like to lathe. So, for instance, if we want to create an arcing walkway, say like a corner walkway that rotates around 90 degrees, we need to draw out a cross-section of that walkway. So, just like with the pen tool, I'm just going to tap the space bar. We'll drag out the overall width of our walkway. I'll go up a couple of units. Let's make a little, you know, kind of an indented center. And say here... And there we go. So there's a very simple cross section. Now we can take a look at this over in perspective. There it is. It's around here someplace. So here is our brush shape actor. Now this is what we're going to use for a lathe. As a matter of fact, since we have it selected, you'll notice that suddenly lathe has become active. Now let's check out the settings here. We have three settings. We have align to side, which is actually a little easier to understand once you've seen a lathe in action. Down from here, we have segments and total segments. The segments property will tell it will basically allow you to punch in the number of segments you'd like when the lathe operation is complete. Total segments allows you to input the number of segments required to rotate 360 degrees. It sounds kind of complex at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's an easy way to come up with the angle of your total rotation. So in this case, with our default settings of 4 and 16, 4 is 1 fourth of 16. 90 degrees is 1 fourth of 360, so using these numbers, we would get a 90 degree arc that had a total of four segments when it was finished. Now, a couple of things you need to think about when you get to this point. One is where is the pivot point of your actor? Because it, the pivot point is going to be the center of the arc's rotation. 
So if the pivot is here at the corner, we're going to rotate from this point, which is okay, but not exactly what I have in mind. We need to know how to move the pivot. Another thing we need to keep in mind is the active viewport that we're looking through when we click the apply button to run the lathe, because it's going to use the angle, oh, I'm sorry, the axis, excuse me, of the active viewport and rotate about that axis. You'll see how that works here in just a moment. Now, let's start off by moving the pivot point. I'm going to slide the pivot of our object off to the left. In fact, I'm just going to make it jump over there. I'm going to right-click right here on the grid, come down to pivot, and choose move here snapped. And you can see that that moved the pivot over to the left of our object, which we can verify down here in our little tiny perspective view. All right, so our pivot is in the right location. Let's take a look at lathing around the wrong axis first. So let's say I was looking over here in the side view and I click the apply button. Check out what happened. Triangulation failure, reverting brush to previous state. We get all kinds of error messages that are just gonna click like crazy until this goes away. So I'm gonna reset my red builder brush. What happened was we arced around and created a brush that was infinitely thin because we used the wrong axis. So make sure you're looking down the proper camera. So let's come over here to the top view. Once again, let's move the pivot point. I'll just right click and choose pivot move here snapped. Now let's do this again from the top view. So we'll click lathe and just click apply. And now we can see that we have rotated around and we've created kind of a little arcing walkway. Now if we wanted to use some different settings, like for instance, if we wanted to rotate around a full 360 degrees, we can still do that. Creating your lathe does not destroy that brush shape actor. So we could just move the red builder brush out of the way. And if you look closely, our brush shape actor is still there and waiting. So I'm going to move its pivot point once again. Say to right here. Now this time, let's go into lathe and change some settings. Let's say we want 32 total segments. And we want, or we want 32 segments when we're done. And it'll take a total of 32 segments to rotate around 360 degrees. Okay, so 32 and 32, we'll click apply and we get a 360 degree rotation. However, take a look at the angles that we have. We don't really have a flat side that lines up orthogonally with our primary axes. Like there's no way that we could set this on edge without rotating it to some kind of odd rotation. This is where the align to side property comes in. So if we jump back over to lathe, you can see align to side. Now I'm gonna move our pivot once again, like we're gonna recreate that brush we just made. So right click, once again, pivot, move here, snapped. And before I do anything, let's actually jump over here for a minute and I wanna add this guy to the world. So I'm gonna hit control A just to add that. Now that's a really complex brush, probably more complex than anything you'd ever really wanna use, but you know, it's cool for a demo. All right, so now with him added, let's move the pivot. Let's do the exact same lathe operation, this time with align to side active and click apply. Now take a look at my sides. We actually have one side that is flat and aligned to the axis. Now what that did though is that kind of changed the overall rotation so that over here we've got things that are a little bit messy, but we do have flat sides to work with now. And if we compare the two side by side, in fact let's go ahead and make our viewport nice and big, you can see how at the bottom of this shape over here we've got kind of a point that does not align very well with a, a flat surface where over here we do have that flat surface. So that's what Align to Side is gonna do. So that is a quick look at the lathe modifier. Again, really it's just a way to create arc-like extrusions with a set number of segments that will wrap up this video. Thanks a lot. In this video, I wanna take a look at the remaining modifiers. Now these are the active modifiers located down here at the bottom of our geometry tools window. Most of them are pretty quick. They're just little one-click operations that are very easy to understand. So we'll just cover them all right here. Now there are eight total buttons. There's create, delete, flip, split, triangulate, optimize, turn, and weld. Now these are context sensitive buttons, meaning that they will not be available all the time. Their availability depends on what you currently have selected. So if I select just a brush at the object level, we see flip, triangulate, and optimize. If I select a polygon, we see delete, flip, triangulate, and optimize. 
if I select an edge, which I got to click right on the edge, we just see split and turn. And if I select a vertex, we see create, delete, and weld. So you see how it kind of jumps around. What I'm going to do is start out here at the object level and we'll talk about optimize, flip, and triangulate. So the first thing is optimize. What optimize is going to do is remove any detail that you do not need in order to define the shape of your object. For instance, if I take this vertex and we slide it up into the air, you'll notice that we automatically get a split to bust the non-planar face we created into two planar triangles. However, if I then take this vertex and we slide it back down to put everything back into a, a planar state, so you can see everything is nice and planar, we no longer need this diagonal edge. So if I select the object, and notice I deselected and just reselected to make sure I had it at the object level, I can now click optimize and boom, that diagonal goes away. So very quick and easy. Now next we have flip. Now to help us understand flip, it would be nice if we had an additive brush. So I'm gonna hit control A here in the perspective viewport to create an additive brush. We'll slide the builder brush out of the way. Now let's see if we can select this brush. I'm gonna hit control shift and then click on our brush. That'll actually grab the brush itself. Now I'm gonna select this polygon up here on top and click the flip button. Now it doesn't look like anything happened, but if you rebuild your geometry, it now looks like we lost one of our polygons. As a matter of fact, if I hold down the L key and drag with the left mouse, you can see the result. Now we did not delete this polygon. It's still there, but these polygons can only be seen from one side. And what we just done is we flipped it over. So now we're kind of looking through it. If we take the brush, if we, I'm sorry, if we take our camera and bring it inside the brush, we can now see this face. And it might be easier if we had that brush selected just so you can see the wires. So if we put the brush inside and look up, we can now see that polygon. So we can select it and we can flip it back over. Now that is flipping on an independent polygon by polygon basis. You don't have to do that. You can take an entire brush and you can flip the whole thing at once if you don't select any polygons. So now this brush is kind of inside out. It is always going to look like a box that is missing a few sides no matter where we view it. So let's go ahead and just flip that back and rebuild. Okay, next we have triangulate. This is simply going to take the polygons of your brush and bust them up into triangles. So I'm going to switch over to brush wireframe mode just to simplify our view. And notice we have all these four-sided faces like you would with any cube. We click triangulate and those all turn into triangles. So I can rotate around and you can see all those. And then if you didn't like that and you wanted to revert it back, you could of course just click optimize and that would get rid of all those extra triangle edges. So that's a look at those operations. Now let's switch over to vertices. So we see create, which is new, delete, and weld, none of which we've got a chance to play with yet. So we'll start off with create. Actually, we can't. We need to start off with delete. So I'm going to grab a polygon and click delete to remove it. Now we can play with create because what create is going to do is allow us to create missing polygons. Now, an interesting thing to, to keep note of here, to use the create modifier, you need to select all of the vertices that surround a hole in your geometry. Now, the order in which you select them is important if you don't want to have to flip your resulting face back over. Let me just give you a quick demonstration. If I have this polygon up here in the upper left selected, hold down control, and notice currently I'm selecting in a counterclockwise fashion. Now I click create, it looks like nothing happened. However, if I put my brush down beneath or stick it up inside our additive brush here, you can see the polygon did get created, but it's flipped the wrong way. So we would need to select it and flip it back over. If we wanted to not have to do that, then we can go ahead and delete this again just for an example. Now let's select our vertices again, starting up here at the upper left. This time I'll go in a clockwise direction. And when I click create, the normal is already facing outward. So we don't have to flip anything. So keep that selection order in mind. If you want it to face out, you're going to need to select in a clockwise fashion. All right, now delete you already saw. We grabbed a polygon, we clicked delete and it removed it. We can do the same thing with vertices. So it just removed that vertex. It ended up splitting the geometry and now we have this great big hole that we could fill in with create if we want to. So make a quick clockwise selection create and there we go. So now we have this really interesting uh, box that has had a corner removed from it. Now I don't really want to use that any further so let's come back over here to the red builder brush 
And with it selected, I'm just going to hit Control A once again to add a new additive brush. So we have something else we can play with. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to take a look at here was Weld. Weld is just going to take a selection of vertices and weld them together. Now here's how it works. We select one, hold down Control, select another one, and click Weld, and watch what happens. The second vertex jumped to the location of the first. So let's try that again. This time, just watch the selection. We start here. This is going to be the guy we weld to. The second one will be the actual vertex that gets moved and welded into position. So we click Weld, and there we go. So now I've created a little bit of a wedge. Now, moving down from here, let's see. We've seen Create, Delete. We've seen Flip. We haven't seen Split yet. And that's a shame, because Split's pretty cool. We can actually show Split right here on the red brush. So we'll go ahead and select the Builder Brush. Now to use split, you have to have an edge selected. So I'm going to select this edge up here at the top corner. And I'll just click it and you can watch what happens. So we click split. We get a brand new edge, which is like an edge loop. It goes all the way around our object. It's perpendicular to the edge that we had selected. And it's halfway along the length of that edge. So it's a great way to quickly add more detail if you want to do something cool, like maybe grab this top resulting edge and slide it up and we've created like a little BSP house shape. And then we could maybe grab, uh, well, if we still had that cross beam selected that I just had a second ago. So go ahead and grab right there, there we go. So now we could split this and maybe now grab that vertex there in the center, we can move that up. And you see how we can start to create some interesting shapes just by splitting and moving some detail around. So that's a, a quick look at split. What's left? We've got turn and we've already covered weld. So I think that's it. All we've got to talk about now is just turn. And what turn is going to do is flip a triangle edge. So right here on this brush, I've got a triangle edge. We just got to select it. And it really requires some precision to grab an edge that's got a face on either side. So we'll go ahead and select that. I'm going to click turn. And there you go. It just runs it to the opposite side. Now, right off the top of your head, you may be thinking, well, I don't know if that's particularly useful, but check this out. I'm going to reset the builder brush to just a basic cube and we'll slide it over here and fly over to take a look at it. And I'm going to grab the vertex over here on the left hand side and slide this up into the air and notice that we get a triangular split to help us keep everything nice and planar. However, take a look at the shape that was created. It almost has this crystalline look to it. What if we wanted the split to run between these two vertices so it looked like this upper face was folded in the other direction? Well, we would need to simply make sure we selected this edge, click turn, and now we've actually changed the shape of the brush by flipping that triangle edge around. So that is a look at the remaining modifiers that we had left. So it's all of the active modifiers down here at the bottom of the window. We've covered delete, uh, covered create, flip and split. We covered triangulate and optimize. I'm just going back over my head because I don't want to miss anything. So that's all eight of them. That is going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot.